audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. Jesus said, If you hold to my teachings, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. One of the main purposes of marriage is that by the grace of God, we learn to serve one another in love. And we do this by discovering and meeting the needs of our partner. But first we need to understand that we all have some basic needs which can only be met by God. For example, we all have a need for unconditional love and acceptance. Now in marriage we will find love but not perfect love. Only God can love us perfectly. Another need is that of discovering our true identity. To look to another person to discover the truth about ourselves will always prove fatal. Our identity is based upon the one with whom we are identified by our new birth. That is upon the Lord Jesus Christ himself. And then thirdly, we have the need to have a meaning and purpose in life. The Bible defines life's purpose as knowing God and His Son, Jesus Christ. Now these are spiritual needs which can only be met through a relationship with God. If these needs are not met in Christ, we would try to force our partner to meet these needs, resulting in conflict. Don't make the mistake of looking to a created being to meet the needs that only can be met by your Creator and Saviour. This is Set Free with Ken Legg. Thanks for joining us. Phil here along with author and pastor Ken Legg. And this week we're looking at the subject of marriage. Welcome, Ken. You you mentioned yesterday that uh, we'll never understand marriage until we understand the nature of the relationship between Christ and the church. And that's a fascinating situation. Can you just unpack that a little? Yeah, you know, the Bible doesn't say that the relationship between Christ and the church is like that between a man and his wife. It says actually the other way around. Mm -hmm. The relationship between Christ and the church helps us to understand God's intention in marriage. Now, it could be argued that marriage was around a long time before Jesus came to the earth and established his church. But the Bible says that his relationship with the church is a mystery. That word mystery means a a truth that's hidden, Uh, a truth that's known by revelation. So where was that truth hidden? Well, it was hidden in Adam and Eve. You remember when God created Eve out of Adam? He said, this is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. So in other words, Eve was in Adam all along. Mm. She was always there. She was just hidden. (laughs) Mm. In a similar way, of course, The church was in Christ before the foundation of the world. In fact, in that passage where Paul speaks about marriage in Ephesians chapter 5, he says this, we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. So there's that kind of shared life together. As Adam and Eve shared a life together, so we share the life of Christ. Now, of course, to bring forth Eve, an operation was performed on the side of Adam. You remember? God put him to sleep, anesthetic style, and took the rib out of his side and then from that fashioned the woman Eve. So what was extracted from his side was the foundation for Eve to be formed. Now, the same applies with Jesus. You know, Jesus died on the cross. The spear was thrust into his side, and the Bible says there came out blood and water. Mm, and from together. that, yeah, from that came forth the church. So this is where the mystery of Christ and the church was hidden in Adam and Eve. And there's probably a few guys out there who would relate to that word mystery as well, you know, as they look at their wives. And uh, there are some mysterious elements about our ladies sometimes. Well, you know, the word mystery (laughs) means uh, I just can't figure it out. (laughs) Yeah, that's right. That's exactly right. It's really fascinating. What practical things can we pick out of this, though, from from that analogy? It's a beautiful picture, Mm. but how can we make it practical? Well, I shared at the beginning of the program that we all have needs that only Christ can meet. And that we shouldn't look to others, you know, our partner, for example, to have those needs met. But having said that, there are needs which God intended to be met in marriage. Um, a woman's needs are basically different to those of a man. Mm. Uh, that's because we're wired differently. You know, there's that very popular book, what is it, Men are from Mars and Women from Venus. Well, I don't <laughs> know if that's biblical. I think it's more biblical to say that man is from dust and woman from rib. <laughs> but the fact is that we are different. We're not the same. You know, God did not put a female nature in a male body or a male nature in a female body. We're, we're different. And we, we have to learn to understand how we're different so that we can, you know, learn to meet each other's needs and serve one another in love. There's a wonderful resource that we watched uh, as a home group ourselves uh, last year called Laugh Your Way to a Better Marriage. The guy's yeah. name, uh, Mark Gungor, I think. But he talks about how women think is like this big ball of spaghetti and everything's connected to everything and it's all bzzz all yeah. over the place. And guys think in these boxes, you know, and you can only yeah. have one box open at a time. <laughs> and yes, guys do have one box called the nothing box, you know, and sometimes we like to get it out. <laughs> and women can't understand it. We are yeah. very, very different, aren't we? 
You're not suggesting that we're not multitasked, are you? <laughs> no, no. I wouldn't, wouldn't okay. do that. All right. We'll go down there. But, uh, you know, we are different. Now, I think the way to understand those differences is to understand the individual roles in marriage, you know, as presented in the Bible. Marriage is a picture of the relationship, as we've said, between Christ and the church. And as we see the relationship between Christ and the church as a pattern for marriage, we come to understand that the husband and the wife each have different roles in marriage. Mm. Uh, These separate roles are designed to help us to discover and meet the unique needs that our partner has. So I think the key word in the New Testament commentary on marriage that sums up the role of the husband is the word love. I think the man is told four times in Ephesians chapter 5 to love his wife. Now, some men might emphasize the word headship. You know, the the husband is the head of the wife. Uh, That's the thing that he might emphasize. But we learn from Christ's example. See, we've got to go back to the example of Jesus and his church. We learn from that example that God intends for men to relate to their wives and their family in loving leadership. Any other form of headship is a distortion of the model that Christ has set. Of course, you look at what Christ did. He gave up his life for the church. That His, his leadership was a sacrificial leadership. And yeah. when you talk about headship and in the context of marriage, you know, we can often think that means I'm the, the big leader and you know she's subservient yeah. and all the rest of it. But no, it's actually us laying down our lives yeah. for because, our wife. Because the word uh, head is not, is not a verb. Mm. What is the verb? It's to love. This is what you're told to do, men. Love your wives, you know. And, and okay, if, if you are the head of your wife, then it's got to be loving leadership. Any other form of leadership is a distortion, as I say. Now, now, what is the definition of love? Well, one of the definitions of love is that it always seeks the highest good of the other person mm. and how they can serve that one in love. So the best way really for a man to love his wife is to be looking out for her interests ahead of his own, isn't it? Yeah, and to seek to understand what those needs are, not, not what he perceives them to be, but what they really are by, by asking her and so on. So what, what have you perceived those to be, Ken, in your <laughs> well, how many years of marriage? My, yeah, well, let, let's quote the experts rather than quote me. Okay. okay. <laughs> and uh, there are four needs that are, are often mentioned. The first one is security. A woman has a need to feel that she is secure in every way, physically, emotionally, financially. She's confident that the basic needs of the home and family are going to be met. This is where her husband comes in to seek to allay any fears in that respect. You know, mm. Paul says, if anyone does not provide for his own, and especially for those of his household, he has denied the faith and is worse than an unbeliever. Now, you notice is the masculine pronoun there. If anyone does not provide for his house, yeah. you know, his household, he has denied the faith and so on. And so, you know, whilst um, both husband and wife can be providers in the home, really is it the man that's the main provider in the home. And so there's that need for security, not only um, in terms of materially, but in every other area where she feels vulnerable. Uh, he has to allay her fears that she's safe, she's secure because he's there. Mm. Uh, secondly, uh, the need for commitment. Um, she needs to feel that she's number one in his life, you know, that uh, she's the centre of his life, not not his friends or, uh, here's a big one, not his work. This is where we kind of often uh, spend a lot of our time mm. and uh, a wife can feel neglected or that she's second best, you know, because there's not that commitment in that sense. Yeah. Thirdly, affection. She has a need to feel cherished um, and her husband meets that need by the way that he treats her, the way he talks to her. Um, the way that he's able to display physical affection like hugs and kisses without wanting it to lead to sex every time, you know. Um, He treats her with respect and with affection. And lastly, emotional intimacy. Uh, Of course, that involves communication, the way that he talks to her. And that's a biggie, isn't it? It's a biggie, and we're going to have to spend a whole session on that one, Phil. But um, basically, let's just um, cut to the chase here and say that, you know, real communication needs to be at the feelings level, um, which is the deepest level of communication. And as I say, we'll talk about that. Let me just finish with a verse from Peter. Uh, In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 7, he says, Husbands, dwell with your wives with understanding. Seek to try to know and to understand your partner. She's not wired the same way as you. Don't think the same, but explore, investigate, ask her, and uh, seek to really meet her needs. And that's how we serve one another in love. practical discussion today on the subject of marriage and there's more to come tomorrow hope you can join us until then remember you don't have to carry that baggage god wants you to be set free for books dvds small group studies and other resources from ken leg including the book against all odds which features topics from today's message shop online at vision.org.au 
That's vision.org.au. Thanks for taking time to listen to this audio on demand from Vision Christian Media. To find out more about us, go to vision.org.au.